blessed time once again that uh, the Lord has given unto us. And um, he has extended his mercies that uh, we be able to learn from uh, this uh, platform. And uh, I just want to thank the Lord because he has been gracious enough to us, giving us everything that we need uh, for the purpose of uh, saving us. And so I continue welcoming you in this series of uh, the prophets and messengers. And uh, today we are looking at number 14, an appeal to common sense part two, an appeal to common sense part two. And uh, this is uh, in line with the uh, councils on health and medical missionary work. I pray that uh, the Lord will enlighten us as uh, we go through pre this presentation. And I want us to pray and then uh, be able to share the word of God together. I want us to pray and then uh, we can share the word of God together. And so let us pray. A heavenly Father, glory and honor be unto thee. Thank you for the salvation, such a greater salvation you have purchased for us through your son. And Lord, how I pray that uh, we may be a people who will avail ourselves for that salvation. And these moments of visitation may not pass us by. Speak to our hearts and reconcile us unto thyself. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so I believe that uh, the Lord will still want to educate us. He will still want us to grow in uh, our spiritual intellect. And uh, above all, he will want to use us as his vessels uh, in the sanctuary. You know, uh, we read in the Bible that... Uh, there are different vessels in the sanctuary used for uh, different works. And we want to be part of the people who shall be used, especially as vessels of honor. I, I like to read uh, this verse because uh, it is something that uh, has been on my mind uh, this day. And uh, this should be in the book of Second Corinthians and then in the book of Timothy. Uh, in the book of uh, Second Corinthians, then in the book of Timothy. Uh, Let us go to the book of uh, Second Corinthians. I'll be there in a moment so that uh, we may know what the Lord wants to speak to us this day. First of all, let us go to the book of uh, Second Timothy chapter 2 and then we'll go back to the book of uh, Second Corinthians. Um. 2 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity, depart from iniquity. And then Paul continues to say, But in a, a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purgeth himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also you 
Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patience. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him and uh, by him at his will. And then uh, there is Second Corinthians. Uh, in Second Corinthians chapter 4, it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And so many of the controversies we have, are uh, they rise from questions which actually uh, Paul told Timothy not to go get involved in them. And uh, he says that uh, let us purify ourselves for adventure in the house of the Lord as there are different vessels for different honors and for different use that we may be found peradventure being the vessels that can be used. And then we are told that um, the reason why there are earthen vessels so that the excellence and the glory may not go to man, but may go to he who gives this glory. And that is what we want. First of all, we don't want to involve ourselves in questions which generate towards strife and will not help in any salvific uh, uh, aspects. And then we just want to give ourselves as vessels, earthen vessels, so that the glory may not go to this earth, but the glory may go to the maker. This is number 14 in the series, Prophets and the Prophets and the Messengers, an appeal to common sense and to, uh, and in this series, we are looking at councils on health and medical missionary work. Um. There are some things that E.G. White spoke, like uh, having two meals, they are better than three meals, and uh, how certain people should feed, and uh, how the others should feel, feed. And this is what I want us to look at, and uh, I pray that the Lord will help us to appeal to common sense in these things. She says, and uh, this is quoting Herbert Douglas because I said I'll be looking into this book uh, more and more. Regarding eating two meals a day, she wrote, some eat three meals a day when two will be more conducive to physical and spiritual health. But she also wrote, the practice of eating but two meals a day is generally found a benefit to health, yet under some circumstances, persons may require a third meal. Further, revealing her common sense, she wrote in 1903, I eat only two meals a day, but I do not think that the number of meals should be made a test. If there are those who are better in health when eating three meals, it is their privilege to have three. Now, uh, our brethren go to some extent that really injures many people and you'll hear statements like if you don't take two meals a day if you are still taking three meals then you are not a reformer you have not reached to the standard the lord will want you to reach but uh, many things are not put in consideration under what circumstances eg white was able to pen these quotes and to who she was writing to and uh, the health of the people and the surroundings of the people. And so these are the things that we are going to look at, uh, just looking at the common sense of these things. Um, we, we read on that uh, medical missionary and taking their physician's formula prescription and methods rigidly. And so you will find that uh, many will take the formulas and will take these quotes and just put on people rigidly. She had to say, Practical counsel was often needed in the treatment of the sick. Professor Herbert Lacey, leading out in the school program at Avondale early in 1897, was quickly devastated by typhoid fever. He lost 20 pounds in one week. His vitality was low and his fever high. Convinced of the Dr. Kellogg's success with the hydrotherapy, 
the medical team applied ice to reduce the fever and to restore circulation in his bowels. Hearing of this, Ellen White dashed off a telegram to medical workers. He used no ice but hot applications. Just look at this. I'll repeat this. Practical counsel was often needed in the treatment of the sick. Professor Herbert Lacey, leading out in the school program at Avondale, early in 1897, was quickly devastated by typhoid fever. He lost 20 pounds in one week. His vitality was low and his fever high. Convinced of Dr. Kellogg's success with hydrotherapy, the medical team applied ice to reduce the fever and to restore circulation in his bowels. Hearing of this, Ellen White dashed off a telegram to the medical workers, he used no ice but hot application. Why did she do this and do it with dispatch? She saw too many dying of typhoid largely because of convectional drugs that wasted the patient's ability to overcome the innovation brought on by the drugs. But she also knew that hydrotherapy should be used wisely. With Lacey's low vitality, ice on his head and body will further weaken him. Miss White later wrote of this serious event, I was not going to be so delicate in regard to the physician as to permit Herbert Lacey's life to be put out. There might be cases where the ice application will work well, but books with prescriptions that are followed to the letter in regard to ice application, to ice application, Sorry for this. Uh, talking about uh, the condition of Herbert Lacey, she saw how weak that uh, Herbert Lacey was and um, could not um, uh, allow uh, such a, a treatment to go on. And so she had this to say that uh, Miss White later wrote of this serious event, I was not going to be so delicate in regard to the physician as to permit Herbert Lacey's life to be put out. There might be cases where the ice application will work well, but books with the prescription that are followed to the letter in regard to ice applications should have further explanations that persons with low vitality should use hot in the place of cold to go just as the book of Dr. Kellogg shall direct without considering the subject is simply wild. Now, writing in a pamphlet 101, page 18, paragraph 1, this is what she had to say. Those who take the lives of others in their hands must be men who have been marked as making life a success. They must be men of judgment and wisdom. They must be men who can sympathize and feel to the depths are uh, men whose holy being, whole being is stirred when they witness suffering. Some men who have been unsuccessful in every other enterprise in life take up the business of a physician. They take the lives of men and women in their hands when they have had no experience. They will read a plan somebody has followed with success and adopt it and will practice upon those who have confidence in them and actually destroy the spark of life that is left in them, yet do not, after all, learn anything, but will go on as a sanguine in the next case, observing the same rigid treatment. Some may have a power of constitution to withstand the terrible tax imposed on them, upon them and live. Then the novices take the glory of themselves. When none is due them, everything is due God and, power, and a powerful constitution. And uh, this is an appeal to common sense instructions on medical missionary work. And this issue of taking a formula for somebody else or for a particular disease and apply it to everyone. This is not common sense because common sense will call you to ask yourself, what type of blood does this person have? What diet has this person been on? What environment is this person coming uh, 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 from? and some other lead questions that will help you to be able to apply the medication in a very diligent way and not in a quackery way. Take an example, somebody coming from Europe and uh, coming to Kenya or USA, they cannot use the same malaria drugs that we have here. 
their constitution is different, their diet may have been different, their background is different, and all this stuff has to be put in consideration so that you may know, will I underdose or will I overdose? Sometimes we hear medical missionaries say that, uh, you know, there's no overdose or underdose in medical missionary because these are herbs and they do not have uh, side effects. Uh, I'm not uh, really sure this is the truth of the matter, but I'm convinced this is not the truth of the matter. Take an example of um, somebody who have uh, uh, who have uh, diarrhea, a stomach problem. And uh, sometimes you hear, give him a cup of this and give him a cup of that. But then the, 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 the water levels in the body and um, the, the capacity for this person to have this strong concussion can lead up even to a, 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 a breakdown of the system itself. And um, uh, sometimes we use to titonia in doing this. This is um, yellow, the wild yellow sunflower. There are people who will never take the, 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 the wild yellow sunflower. There are people who will never take the purple leaf. There are other people who will never take aloe vera. But because somebody has read that this was successful on another person, they go forward and tell the person that uh, this is what works. And if you don't take this, then uh, uh, you are not going to get well. First of all, know that you are working with minds which are constituted differently. And you are working with willpower. Somebody believes that when they are sick, aloe vera works them for them better. Another person believes that when they are sick, uh, the wild yellow sunflower is good for them. Another person with the same disease tells you that, you know what? That which has been successful on me is a purple leaf. But because you read somebody somewhere that uh, many physicians have been successful with this, you say, if you don't take this, then you are not taking anything else. An appeal to common sense. That is advice on medical uh, uh, work. And so she says that uh, we shouldn't be getting rigid with other uh, medical missionaries' prescriptions and think that we can put on everyone that we get, even if that medication was able to treat the same disease, we should consider the different constitutions of the people. Like um, uh, somebody will get uh, uh, malaria and um, they, they, they can't even uh, be able to be healed, let us say, with uh, the common uh, herbal medicines. And even they will tell you, if uh, really you want to have success on me, I have to take a double of this. I have heard people say that this is a lack of faith. I tell you, brethren, this is not a lack of faith. You are working with willpower. And maybe you may just be introducing somebody to something so new. So you have really to be prayerful rather than uh, um, uh, provoking people that uh, they are weak and they cannot uh, be able to, um, uh, um, to, to, to accept medical missionary work. Know that you are dealing with sick people. And when the people are sick in the body, also the mind tends to be sick. And so you are dealing with a double problem. That is the physical and the spiritual. And an appeal to common sense is something that uh, we have not been robbed of common sense. We should have common sense. And so another custom which has been instituted is that which requires all to keep their places at the table till the last one has finished. But this makes eating a burden to those who eat no more than they feel their stomachs can properly care for. Health reformers need not observe their, these inventions of fashion. If you are aware those eating to excess continually pass the tempting dishes, it is well to break human rules and pass quietly for the table. This is, and this is Spalding and Magan, page 42.2. You find that uh, in some places he says that uh, mealtime is a social time. And so the members should interact and socialize. But then you have the people who will keep on eating and then they are there to socialize. She says, don't be forced to sit there. Just because one quote says this, it should not be a precedence for everything, an appeal to common sense. Because by sitting there, you may be tempted to be indulged in also overeating because there are people who will never stop, yet they call themselves reformers. Uh, I think the word reformers has been misused amongst us, and it is a time that it was reformed. 
the word reformer itself must be reformed. There has been a disconnection between the gospel and medical missionary, but there is an outcry, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, and working in regular lines, but what said the Lord? In uh, King James Version, Jeremiah 7, chapter 7, verse 3 to 4, we are told, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are this. Now, um, a a another issue that was affecting medical missionary line and uh, the working in the vineyard of the Lord was that uh, everything had to go through the conference. Medical missionaries had to be under the supervision of the conference and they could not move a foot before their work was to be approved by the conference. And here is what Sister White laments about these regular lines and controlling everything uh, to do with the health message and medical missionary work and working for the other people. When Edson's letters presented, when Edson letters presented the work that he was doing in the southern field by his boat, used as a meeting house, when the he told of the gathering of the children for Sunday school, of the invitation he received to hold meetings, of the souls who were becoming interested in these meetings, of the naked to be closed and the sick to be helped, this is Isaiah 58, and nothing in the way of means to carry forward the work, the work that should be done was presented to me in the night season. Not only was there presented to me the field in which he was at work, but several places where in the providence of God he will be called to work. The eager faces, the earnest desire, the hunger of souls represent, expressed were before me and I said, what can we do for these people that are now so interested when the situation is so discouraging? Continued on. My guide said, this work will be sowing seed for time and for eternity. Remember, this was the work of Isaiah 58, in the, the work of uh, medical missionary work, and the conference was trying to control it uh, into regular lines. And then the instruction was given. The angels of the Lord will go before him. He will be counted, accounted out of line. But many ought to be out of the lines that have been maintained to be the regular routine. And unless they themselves come into line, they will say, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are, are we. Unless that temple is purified, cleansed and sanctified, God will not give them his presence in the temple of which they boast. Those who claim to believe the truth do not possess that power that God will bestow upon them if they really believe and was striving for conformity to his image. The church is in the Laodicean state. The presence of God is not in her midst. If Christ were formed within the hope of glory, conformity to his image will be seen, and the church trials which separate the members from Christ will disappear. And so she talks about lack of common sense, and people thinking that unless they are working in regular lines, then their work there cannot be approved. But she says... It is those who are hindering this work of medical missionaries that the presence of the Lord is not with them. Now, I'm not talking about anarchy and disorderliness and disunity and independent atom. I'm talking about when everything that can be done has been done, yet the people who should be involved in the work are not cooperating to do the work. Yet you see that souls are being hurried into grave in darkness, he says that this regular line should be broken down like the porter's clay. In fact, I'll just go ahead and read this statement about um, these regular lines and common sense. Uh, so, Um, uh, look at this. In uh, Spalding and Magan 194.5, look at this. Talking about this medical missionary, and you know that Spalding and Magan were doing the work of medical missionary and the institution work, and she's appealing to common sense. If the regular lines fail in helping in the work of Isaiah 58, what should we do? God is displeased with the spirit you have manifested. Your insinuations and criticism are most unbecoming. When you ought to be a teacher, you have need that one teach you 
Do you know that you are criticizing, criticizing the work of man who has been visited by the angels of the Lord? Who has sent you to a field where good work is in progress to show your zeal by tearing it in pieces? If this is working in the regular lines, it is uh, it is high time that we worked in irregular lines. An appeal to common sense advices in medical missionary work. Again, in uh, another place, uh, in another place, She talks about uh, leaving Madison alone. And this is in ATMR 202, paragraph 4. The Lord has in instructed me that from the first, the work in Huntsville and Madison should have received adequate help. But instead of this help being rendered promptly, there has been long delay. And in the matter of the Madison School, there has been a standing off from them because they were not under the ownership and control of some conference. This is a question that should sometimes be considered, but it is not the Lord's plan that means should be withheld from Madison because they are not bound to the conference. The attitude which some of our brethren have assumed toward this enterprise shows that it is not wise for every working agency to be under the dictation of conference officers. There are some enterprises under certain conditions that will produce better results if standing alone. When my advice was asked in reference to the Madison School, I said, remain as you are. There is danger in binding every working agency under the dictation of the conference. The Lord did not design that this should be. The circumstances were such that the burden bearers in the Madison School could not bind up their work with the conference. So the circumstances forced the people of Madison not to be under conference. I knew their situation, and when many of the leading men in our conferences ignored them, because they did not place their school under conference dictation, I was shown that they would not be helped by making themselves amenable to the conference. They had better remain as led by God, amenable to him to work out his plans. But this matter need not to be blessed abroad. Again, uh, This is the quote that I wanted in 3MR 264.3. Again, she says, just speak, still speaking on medical missionary work and the conference, having a lot of uh, me mechanical, uh, um, uh, uh, mechanical work to approve this and approve that, and yet people are perishing. The situation was again presented and the agents of occupying the fields that were presented to me. Then being worked under the supervision of God using Edison White as his agency to open the field. But there were no others that would think of touching that portion of the field or would engage in working it. Those who should have rejoiced to see something done were determined to give no recognition to Edison White or the work because he did not work in the regular lines. God has presented before you how he regarded the regular lines. The regular lines had need to be broken as potter's vessels in is broken and reconstructed. And uh, I know that people will say that uh, our church doesn't really uh, tie the gospel uh, work and everyone can do whatever they want to do. But uh, sometimes you can apply for the conference to allow you to do something and it will take months and even a year. When if it had been approved immediately, the work that could have gone forward could have been a great work. Sometimes you hear the finances, sometimes you hear we are involved in this and this. And yet, as they say, the finances and this and this, they are not, again, giving you an authority to go ahead. And so she says that these things that are tied to regular lines, these things should be broken like the potter's vessels and be reconstructed. This is number, th number 14 in the series, The Prophets and the Messengers. An appeal for common sense advices in medical missionary work. Again, continued on, we read, that um, the regular lines need to have been broken and reconstructed. She continued to say, 
Phariseeism in the Christian world today is not extinct. The Lord desires to break up the course of pro precision which has become so firmly established, which has hindered instead of advancing the work. He desires his people to remember that there is a large space over which the light of present truth is to be shed. Divine wisdom must have abundant room in which to work. It is to advance without asking permission or support from those who have taken to themselves a kingly power. In the past, one set of men have tried to keep in their own hands the control of all the means coming from the churches and have used these means in a most disproportionate manner, erecting expensive buildings where such a large buildings were unnecessary and uncalled for and leaving needy places without help or encouragement. They have taken upon themselves the grave responsibility of retarding the work where the work should have been advanced. It has been left to a few supposed kingly minds to say what fields should be worked and what fields should be left unworked. And uh, she had to say some very important statement on this uh, uh, on this issue. Uh, uh, this is uh, what um, she had to say on this also. In uh, special testimonies for ministers and workers, this is series eight, page four, paragraph two. The arrangement that all money must go through Battle Creek and under the control of the few men in that place is a wrong way of managing. There are, all, are altogether too many weight responsibilities given to a few men, and some do not make God their counselor. What do these men know of the necessities of the work in foreign countries? How can they know how to decide the question which come to them asking for information? How can they know how to decide the question which come to them asking for information? It will require three months or for these in foreign countries to receive a response to their question, even if there was no delay in writing. And uh, you may say, in this era of uh, digital conversation, the thing can only take one minute, but try to write a letter to the conference asking for something and see the preliminaries that it will go through before it comes back to you. Sometimes it may not see the day, the light of the day. So an appeal to common sense. Why, if you are having money and there is a needy case here, somebody needs a house, somebody needs treatment, somebody needs food and some other things that must be, be done. Why should you take the burden of taking your money to the benevolent kit and then request it back to you? It is gospel order to do that, and it is well, and I'm one of the advocates of gospel order. I have really prayed and longed for this thing, gospel order, because there are people who get more money than the others, and there's no equal distribution of money. And there are people who are not doing anything, and they're getting thousands of dollars, and you will never see what they are doing. But the people who are working, you find that brothers are walking naked. Brothers do not even have phones. Brothers do not have any equipment to do the work. They are working at a very limited resource. And the, they are working and bringing souls to truth and planting churches. Yet no one recognizes them, recognizes them. And so why should you use the protocol? I said this is in order to put your money in benevolent kit. Everyone should not be just... Uh, uh, have this habit of managing the money the way they want. But then here, an appeal to common sense. Here you have a situation that needs to be arrested. Will you go to the church and put money in benevolence and then write a letter that you need that money to do the work? An appeal to common sense. Continued on, uh, we are told, a few men have kept the truth in circumscribed channels because to open new fields will call for money. And this is what I'm saying. Only in those places in which they were interested have they been willing to invest means. And at the same time, in a few places, five times as much money as was necessary has been invested in buildings. The same amount of money used in establishing plants in places where the truth had never been introduced will have brought many souls to a saving knowledge of Christ. And uh, there always, there's always a reasoning like this. And uh, sometimes we have this conversation that, uh, think of this, if we will take 1 million and go to a work somewhere and only one soul comes to truth, and then we take the same 1 million and go to another place and have maybe 10 or 20 people coming to truth, 
where has the money been spent well? And you know how it goes, where 10 people have been saved. Now, you may have to save 10 people, but what? At the end of the day, you may not have the 10 people. You may have zero of them. But you may go to a place, do a work and save one person, and then one person does a job that will never have imagined they do. We should not be looking at the money in terms of the people who come to truth. Now, I understand that uh, we need to plan well and calculate well, have a feasibility study and all this. But then when it comes to soul winning, planned in and out of season. And if God bids you, go put there a meeting of this money and only one soul comes to truth, you are not to blame anyone and you are not to mama in any way. What is happening among us is we are not praying and we are not listening to the voice of the Lord. We think that where we have rushed and done our work without asking of the Lord and having thousands being baptized, that is a successful work. But then where God plans and we go there and save one soul, we have wasted. God does not look at the issues the same way we look at them. Let us kneel down and pray. Let us approach the Lord. Whatever he bids us to do, we will do. And we should not be working in terms of money. We should be thinking of how Christ is thinking when a soul is to be saved. And so the messenger continues to say uh, that um, for years, the same routine, the same regular way of working has been followed and God's work has been greatly hindered. The narrow plans that have been followed by those who did not have clear sanctified judgment have resulted in showing that in showing that is not approved by God. In general uh, conference bulletin, April 11, 1903, she said, God calls for a revival and a reformation. The regular lines have not done the work which God desires to see accomplished. Let revival and reformation make constant changes. Something has been done in this line, but let not the work stop there here. No, let us let's no let every yoke be broken. Let men awaken to the realization that they have an individual responsibility. The present showing is sufficient to prove to all who have the true missionary spirit that the regular lines may prove a failure and a snare. God helping his people, the sack of kings who dare to take such a great responsibility shall never again exercise their unsanctified power in the so-called regular lines. Too much power has been invested in unrevived, unreformed human agencies. Jesus sends his people a message of warning to prepare them for his coming. The prophet John was made known the closing work in the great plan of man's redemption. He beheld an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters, Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Uh, the angel represented in prophecy as delivering this message symbolizes a class of faithful men who, obedient to the promptings of God's spirit and the teachings of his word, proclaim this warning to the inhabitants of earth. This message was not to be committed to the religious leaders of the people. They had failed to preserve their connection with God and had refused the light from heaven. Therefore, they were not of the number described by the apostle Paul, but he brethren are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. Yet are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor darkness. Continuing on, on uh, the work of medical missionary and how it has been a denominational curse. Any structure without a right arm, whether physical or structural, will accomplish nothing. No wonder the third angel's message has slipped out of our hands and we have 
to blindly hover in the wilderness. Perhaps the greatest disappointment in 1901 was the inability to bring into the church structure the International Medical Missionary and Benevolent Association headed by J.H. Kellogg, a problem that will become the denominations, denominations most critical crisis up to that time. And she says, you will never be ministers after the gospel order till you show a decided interest in medical missionary work, the gospel of healing and blessing and strengthening. Come up to the, to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty powers of darkness, that it be not said of you, Kasi meros, kasi bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord. Judges 5.23 in uh, Councils on Health, page, uh, Councils on Health, page 533.2. In 1877.2, she says, the medical missionary work is to be the work of the church as the right arm to the body. The third angel goes forth proclaiming the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The medical missionary work is the gospel in practice. All lines of work are to be harmoniously blended in giving the invitation come for all things are now ready. In uh, 60 to 88.1, she says, Again and again, I have been instructed that the medical missionary work is to bear the same relation to the work of the third angel's message that the arm and hand bear to the body. Under the direction of the divine head, they are to work unitedly in preparing the way for the coming of Christ. The right arm of the body of truth is to be constantly active, constantly at work, and God will strengthen it. But it is not to be made the body. At the same time, the body is not to say to the arm, I have no need of thee. The body has need of the arm in order to do active, aggressive work. Both have their appointed work, and each will suffer great loss if worked independently of the other. And so this was the appeal to common sense and uh, the instruction to the uh, medical missionary team on how they should be working. And so uh, this element of uh, the medical missionary work gives character to the work of the third angel's message. The medical missionary work is the right arm of the third angel's message. And we know that without the right arm, there is not much that uh, you can accomplish. Uh, God has marked out the medical missionary as his appointed agency, and uh, it should have a room for encouragement. Medical missionaries are to have as much encouragement as accredited evangelists. And we should make a habit of praying with them, supporting them money-wise, and financing them to be able to go to the field and do a work that even an evangelist cannot do. You know, Minister of Healing, page 143, Christ's method alone will bring true success. He mingled with the people, inquired of their burden, helped them, and bid them follow me. The medical missionary is an entering wage, and when it is not supported by any church, then an appeal to common sense should work. That if this is the right arm, what are we achieving without it? And somebody should arise and say, I will resurrect the right arm of the message. The medical mission workers are doing the long neglected work as uh, we are told. And uh, I'd like us to read this. She says, the medical missionary workers are doing the long neglected work which God gave to the church in Battle Creek. They are giving the last call to the supper which he has prepared. My brethren, why do you keep so many things bound up in the Battle Creek? Why do you not take the truck and missionary work into other cities where there is much missionary work to be done? The many interest centering in uh, Battle Creek should be divided and subdivided and placed in other cities. You who think you are wise men say, may say it will cost too much. We can do the work here in Battle Creek at less expense. Well, does not the Lord know all this? Is not he a God who understands all the unbelieving reasoning that holds so many interests in Battle Creek? He has revealed to you that senders should be made in all the cities. This will call many out of Battle Creek to work in other places. In order to be carried forward aright, the medical mission or work needs talent. It requires strong, willing hands and wise discriminating management. 
but uh, can this be while those in responsible places, presidents of conferences and ministers bar the way? The Lord says to the presidents of conferences and other influential brethren, remove the stumbling blocks that have been placed before the people, 80, 71.12.5. Again, in 75.2, she says, we should feel deeply over these things for they are true. We should have a high estimate of truth and of the value of souls. Time is short and there is a great work to be done. If you feel no interest in the work that is going forward, if you will not encourage medical missionary work in the churches, it will be done without your consent for it is the work of God and it must be done. Now, time, place, and circumstances should be considered while, while quoting Sister White. One question we should ask ourselves are, or is the circumstance that was with the Battle Creek with us also today, that medical missionary work is not supported by churches? It is in a few localities that you will find that uh, this work is being supported by the church. But then she says that if the churches cannot come up with this work, the work of Isaiah 58, then we should appeal to common sense. And what is common sense? There is a work that is not being done and it should be done. And if people are standing in the way she says, it will be done without your consent. So people will quote you that the general conference is the highest authority on the faith of the earth and it should be obeyed. It shouldn't be obeyed when it's standing in the way of the work. When few men meet and decide that this should not be done when it should be done, it is a time to honor God rather than honor an institution of man. And so he says, if you feel no interest in the work that is going forward, if you will not encourage medical mission or work in the churches, it will be done without your consent for it is the work of God and it must be done. Continued on. It says, there is enough wealth in your conference to carry forward this work successfully and shall the prince of darkness be left in undisputed position of our great cities because it costs something to sustain missions? Let those who will follow Christ fully come up to the work, even if it be over the heads of ministers and president. Those who work, those who in such a work, those who in such a work as this will say, I pray thee have me excuse should beware lest they receive their discharge for time and for eternity. Let Christians who love duty lift every own they can and then look to go to God for further strength. He will work through the efforts of Tara going men and women and will do what they cannot do. New light and power will be given them as they use what they have new father and zeal will start the church as they see something being accomplished. And so God is calling for his church to arise. But there has been a lot of leaning on the arm of flesh in our days. There is a lot to desire in the work that is going on uh, at such a time. Men are put in positions of uh, where God should be. That uh, instead of counseling with God, men are starting to counsel with men and hinder the work that the Lord has, uh, 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 has, uh, has instructed that it should be done. And so I just pray that um, we may continue reading these things and uh, how will we be, be successful in medical mission or work? If this work cannot be sponsored by the conferences, if the churches cannot hold on to this work, we are not to stand by the side and say, because so and so says that the work cannot go forward, then I'll not go in the field to work. God has called us individually, has given us opportunities individually, and he has made us stewards individually. 
and people some people are more faithful than what actually you will say it should be they see things going wrong but they still just put their money there we are asked such a simple thing if you are a businessman will you continue investing where you are failing will you pour out your money to sponsor something that you are not seeing a fruit of it if we are so wise in our secular duties and matters how wise should we be in the work of god we we, we cannot continue doing the same thing and having the bad results and think that anything will ever change god calls us to think now and to ask has our faithfulness to the conference yielded to something if it has not there is the responsibility there is the responsibility of a faithful a uh, 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 tither and those who bring in their offerings if they are not satisfied with the work that is going on they should through the right attitude ask what is happening and if the means will continue to be misused god has given us common sense to know what should do but more so he is asking us to seek him in prayer so that he may direct us and so this instruction in medical missionary work should awaken many of us that we should restudy isaiah chapter 58 and see what the lord is speaking to us appeal to the conferences appeal to the churches to do the work but if they will not do we have been simply told the work will do without their permission may god bless us as uh, we seek the right principles of working as we appeal to common sense and more so we appeal for everyone having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ who will be able to guide us to the perfect ending. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord is the temple of the Lord if it is doing the right thing. But if it's not doing, then she's, uh, the, the Bible says, go to Shiloh and see what I did with that place. And in closing, I'd just like to read uh, one thing and then we close. Uh, in fact, I'll read two things and then we close. In DA, I'll start with DA. DA 232.2. In principle of what we have been talking about, the work of the medical missionary and the conference not working or supporting the workers and standing in the way. As the lights, sorry, uh, I need to put this here. As the light and life of men was rejected by ecclesiastical authorities in the days of Christ, so it has been rejected in every succeeding generation. Again and again, the history of Christ's withdrawal from Judea has been repeated. When the reformers preached the word of God, they had no thought of separating themselves from the established church, but the religious leaders would not tolerate the light, and those that wore it were forced to seek another class who were longing for the truth. In our day, he says, in our day, the same principle applies. In our day, few of the professed followers of the reformers are actuated by their spirit. Those who are saying they are reformers, they do not have the spirit of the, reform, the reformers. If they had the spirit of the reformers, what will they do? Few are listening to the voice of God. And that is what I have been saying. Many people are leaning on the arm of flesh and not listening to the voice of God, what he's saying we should do. Few are listening to the voice of the Lord and ready to accept truth in whatever guise it may be presented. Often those who follow in the steps of the reformers are forced to turn away from the churches they love in order to de declare the plain teaching of the word of God. And many times those who are seeking for light are by the same teaching obliged to leave the church of their fathers that they may render obedience. And uh, we read again, uh, many went from Shiloh, many went from Shiloh. Uh, and this is in 2 BC, 
also page 1010, paragraph 4, and also in signs of the time, December 1, 1881. As the men of Israel witnessed the corrupt course of the priests, they thought it safer for their families not to come up to the appointed place of worship. Many went from Shiloh with their peace disturbed, their indignation aroused, until they at last determined to offer their sacrifices themselves, concluding that this would be fully as acceptable to God as to sanction in any manner the abomination practiced in the sanctuary. And then um, the book UL. Um, sorry, the book, uh, is it? Um, LHU. I'll try LHU. This is um where we are told that uh, God will continue working on the same principle. God will continue working on the same principle. I just, uh, just lost the page. Um, there. This is UL, page uh, 131, paragraph 3. The Lord Jesus will always have a chosen people to serve him. When the Jewish people rejected Christ, the Prince of Life, he took from them the kingdom of God and gave it unto the Gentiles. God will continue to work on this principle with every branch of his work. When a church proves unfaithful to the word of the Lord, whatever their position may be, however high and sacred their calling, the Lord can no longer work with them. Others are then chosen to, be, to bear important responsibilities. But if these in turn do not purify their lives from every wrong action, if they do not establish pure and holy principles in all their borders, then the Lord will grievously afflict and humble them, and unless they repent, will remove them from their place and make them a reproach. If he is removing them from their place, is he leaving the place blank? No, God will always have workers to work for him. And uh, the reminder is this, that... Uh, um, if you feel no interest in the work that is going forward, if you will not encourage medical missionary work in the churches, it will be done without your consent, for it is the work of God and it must be done. This is 8075.2. Let those who will follow Christ fully come up to the work, even if it be over the heads of ministers and president. Now you say, will they not be disfellowshipped and chased away from the church? If they are done that, then it is not something new. They are doing the work of the Lord. They see neglected fields as Spalding and Magan saw, as Edson White saw. And if they will not be supported, then there is no reason for investing where you can't find a profit. The work will be done uh, uh, on the heads of the ministers and uh, the presidents. Otherwise, let us seek to be organized. Let us seek to have gospel order. But in all this, let us seek Christ because he's the one who will lead us into the perfect, into the safest harbor. May the Lord bless us and uh, shall we pray. Heavenly Father, we know that in the end times you shall take your, the work in the reign of your own hands. And uh, many of these regular lines will be broken like the porter's vessels. Some will be reconstructed, but some will suffer loss. We pray that, Lord, we may not be amongst the vessels that will suffer loss. 
may you convict and convert us once again and give us a privilege of uh, working again in the, in the vineyard. And as we seek unity, organization, and gospel order, Lord, help us to seek Christ more because he's the only one who can give us the right principles of working in the vineyard. Bless the children and help all of us embrace this medical missionary work and the work of Isaiah 58. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God, continue blessing you. Until the next time, blessings and bye for now.